Hi everyone, I'm Anita from the blog Whispering Pines Homestead. I am so glad you're here today because I'm going to share a couple of really popular countertop solutions that I've seen all over the internet and they're also really low budget, which of course is why I'm doing them, but they're also really easy. One is a little bit easier than the other, but they're both certainly easy enough for any of us to tackle if we have those countertops that, you know, they're kind of okay, but you just want to update the look and you want to do it on a budget. And I'm also going to share a few other updates I did in my master bathroom, including adding some beautiful wormy chestnut trim I restored from my great grandfather's house. I made a new shower curtain and a few other things that are just little cosmetic things that made my bathroom look a lot better than it did before. So follow along as I share all that and be sure you let me know in the comments below if you've tried either one of these countertop ideas. This is the before of my girl's bathroom and there's really nothing wrong with it. I just don't care for the countertop and because I don't have the budget for something like quartz right now, I thought I would try one of the popular methods I'd seen online and it's just contact paper made for countertops. I've watched a lot of tutorials before attempting this and then I finally got the nerve to try. I actually put some on about a year ago similar to this one as a test. Then after figuring out all the mistakes I made the first time, I bought a better brand of paper to try again. I also picked a pattern with more movement and color because the wider one just looked too sterile in the room. Also, I made sure to get one that is 24 inches wide so it would completely cover the countertop and there would be no seams. I actually thought this was pretty hard and awkward to install, so I didn't film myself doing it. The tutorial I recommend watching is linked, and she does a great job explaining and showing the process, so definitely check out DIY Mommy if you want to see the exact process. So now I'm going to show you how the countertop turned out and also show you the rest of this bathroom. Y'all, I really love how this looks. It totally changed the look of this room and it also gives me a better idea of what I might choose when I can actually change the countertop. It was not easy though, in my opinion, to get it stuck down without tearing the paper and without bubbles. There are a lot of tips online, including using a blow dryer on the edges, which I did find very helpful. And I was able to get it stuck down without really too much of an issue, but I do recommend if you are going around the sink to make sure you cut a template out of craft paper or something like that. So you won't just be guessing when you try to cut around the sink and that will make it so much easier. Also, it is super important to make sure you caulk around all the edges and especially around the sink because you do not want any water getting underneath the paper, which obviously will just lift it up. In my opinion, if you get a really nice fit around the sink and it's caulked properly, it will hold up much better. Again, I had a different paper on this countertop for the last year and it actually held up really well, except in a couple of small places where I didn't have it caulked well. This bathroom does not get a lot of really heavy use like hairspray or makeup or anything like that. So I really can't say how it would hold up with that particular kind of use, but I didn't have any issues with it staining or ripping or anything like that. And it just seems to be a great short term solution for a countertop you want to change the look of, but you want to do it on a budget. The rest of the bathroom, I really didn't make any changes because I'm pretty happy with it. I know that sounds surprising. <laughs> I made these super cute towels years ago by trimming some towels I already had with scraps from an old Chanel bedspread that was ripped. I had some photos from a family vacation printed on canvases and this is one of my favorites of my children and I love how it looks in this room. I also brought in this sweet little oil lamp from the bedroom a friend had given my mother. The colors were just so perfect here and it will be super handy when the power goes out which seems to be very often these days. I installed the door from the old house here about nine years ago and I actually have some fluted trim to go around it but I need to rehang the door to accommodate the room like so I haven't done it yet. Here are a couple of the larger towels I trimmed with scraps from the Chanel bedspread. I also added some blue and pink lace because I just thought that looked really sweet and it was such a great way to use those pieces that were cut from that bedspread.
On this wall, I hung a window from the old house and a canvas of a photo my husband took on a family vacation. This is just such an amazing photo. The colors are so vibrant and beautiful, and I thought it was perfect for this room. So I've had it here for years, and I don't have any plans to change it anytime soon. There's actually a door here that we do not use, and I'm not sure if we should just wall it up, but in any case, we've not made a decision about it. I had a smaller door that I restored from the old house, and so I just decided to lean it here and install a towel rack on it that I made until I figure out where to use it. I like to have a chair in here to hold towels, etc., especially now that my girls don't live here, so when they come to visit, they have a place to put a makeup bag or a small suitcase. I've had this chenille rug for years and I love to have it here because it coordinates so nicely with the towels and these colors are just perfect for a vintage style bathroom. I believe that it belonged to my grandmother. It's one of my favorites. I should mention the gray color here on the tongue and groove boards is what inspired the cabinetry color throughout the house because these boards came from the old house and daddy said granddaddy sold this paint at his store. I love how this room turned out and I'm really satisfied with the difference the countertop paper made in the overall look. Now let's look at the master bathroom. This is how the room looked probably 12 years ago or so, but we took out that bathtub and built in some cabinetry because we needed more closet space. And again, I just didn't like the countertop, so I decided to paint it. I actually painted some countertops in the kitchen years ago, so I just repeated that process, starting with sanding the surface to rough it up and then cleaning it up to make sure that there was no debris left behind. I vacuumed and then I used a wet cloth to just clean everything away. After that, I taped off the edges and around the sink with frog tape, which I absolutely love. Y'all, this is the only tape I will use for painting because I find it works extremely well in those situations where you need to use tape. It really leaves a really clean line. So I started off with two coats of Valspar Multi-Surface Primer and then waited a couple of hours in between each coat to recoat. Next, I used three coats of Valspar latex enamel that I used on my other countertops about 10 years ago. But apparently they don't sell this anymore, so any latex enamel would work. I followed that by four coats of Minwax polycrylic, again, letting each coat dry about two hours in between. And then I made sure I caulked around the sink after everything was dry. So instead of just stopping with a countertop makeover, I decided to do some other things in the bathroom, including making a new shower curtain. Mother had about five yards of this floral fabric that I love, so I made a new shower curtain out of that. And then I decided this would be a really good time to install the trim I'd save from the old house in this room. So I had to go through the very painstaking process of digging out each board, cleaning and restoring each piece, then measuring, cutting, and installing it all in the room. In my opinion, this is actually what made the biggest difference in the room because when you add 120 year old trim that's five inches wide and 10 inch baseboards, it makes a big difference, especially in a small room like a bathroom. It was obviously a long process to get the wood restored and installed, but oh wow, y'all, it was so worth it. It was worth all the hard work in the long run and really, really, made a big difference in the look of the room. So let's take a look at the room now. I could not be happier with how this bathroom turned out. It really feels like an old house. And I realize 120 year old doors and trim will do that for a room, but I've also worked really hard to keep all the decor elements, vintage or antique as well, so it just feels very authentic, like, like an old house that's had a few updates over the years, but it's still kept the old charm. The cabinetry color is from the old house and I've added a beautiful favorite vintage rug from my great grandmother.
and I could just not be happier with the look of the countertop. I really wanted just a plain white countertop with no pattern and I love how it turned out. Again, remember I had painted a countertop in the kitchen years ago and it held up great for about six years with three kids before we took that out. So I feel that this one is going to be fine. I don't know how it would hold up with someone, again, like with the other one, using a lot of makeup or something that might stain it, but obviously if you try something like this, it's not going to have the same durability as you would have with quartz or granite or even laminate, but it sure is a great temporary fix for an ugly countertop. I'm not sure what this piece is and no one seems to be able to identify it for me but there were several of these in the old house and I've made this one into a towel rack by adding a couple of plant hooks. I've added some towels and washcloths in this antique Cherokee river cane basket made by Cherokee artisan Eva Wolf. This basket is truly a treasure and one I found at my grandparents' house, and I love the natural and organic texture it adds. These antique prints actually came from a family friend who stayed here in the summers and lived in Tampa during the winters. And because my grandmother was from Florida, I thought that would be a sweet nod to her heritage and art that she might have used here in the old house. And wow, what a difference this trim has made. I added the doors about nine years ago, but the trim really finished everything off, and that's really what makes this room feel old. The porcelain doorknobs are also from the old house. The color on the walls here is actually a custom color I mixed using BHG Sunlit White and Eddie Bauer Limestone. I couldn't find a color I liked with the light in here, so I just mixed these together and loved what came out of that. I just used an old lace tablecloth for the curtain. I love that it still lets light in and there's a privacy shade when that is needed. Of course you know I love how the shower curtain turned out as this beautiful floral fabric just kind of pulls everything in here together. The shower actually had glass doors originally and I took those off a couple years ago because I really didn't like them and the bottom edge was a serious safety hazard. The curtain has a liner that I can wash easily and the curtain also adds an element of softness to all of these hard surfaces.
I really love how this room turned out and that in both bathrooms I was able to take things I had, use very little money, and make the rooms look so much better than they did before. I hope you enjoyed both of these countertop solutions and be sure to let me know in the comments below if you've either tried one of them before or if you're about to try them because I'm really curious how the process works for you and how they hold up as well. So be sure to let me know that. Also, y'all, if there's one thing that I want people to take away from anything I say or do, it is this one thing. Use what you have. We all have different things. We all have different gifts and different gifts of creativity. So draw on that, use what you have, and make it beautiful because you can do it. We can all have the beautiful homes we want and we don't have to spend a lot of money to do that. So use what you have and make it beautiful. Mm -hmm.